Hello painters, welcome back. It's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com. Now today I'm not going to be painting, but what I am going to do is try and save this painting. You'll find this painting in an earlier video. It was a swipe against a negative space background. And when it was wet, wow, it was really, really nice. But when it dried, not only was the uh, negative space, this purple color really patchy, but it was covered in all these tiny little lumps and bumps that was in the paint. It was a new paint to me, one that I hadn't used before. And although sometimes I get lumps and bumps in my white and I've learned to strain that one, I hadn't for this one. I wasn't expecting it. And when it dried, I was so disappointed. So I'm gonna put a little um, photograph in here and you can see exactly what the lumps and bumps in the paint on this one look like. Okay, so that's not good. But I thought that I would really like to try and save this painting and I thought it would be an interesting exercise to try and do that. So I'm going to try and keep this section here, which is the nice swipe section, and then replace this bumpy purple um, with another colour. But first to do that, I can't just paint over, I need to get rid of these bumps. So let's have a look at what I've got. First of all, I thought it would be helpful to talk about um, what we can do to try and avoid this happening in the future. So this is how I generally keep my paints. I will mix them up in a little jug and then when I get them to the right consistency, I pour them into my bottle, um, including the, the paint, the Floetrol, the water and the silicone and I keep them in here, a quick shake and they're ready to go. But before I do that now, I've got myself one of these. It's just a little mini strainer as you can see, it has a very fine um, mesh to it. And so now once I've mixed my paints in the jug, I just strain them as I put them through into the bottle. So I'm catching all the little lumps and bumps in the paint before it starts. So that hopefully will avoid this happening again. And it really doesn't take me any extra time because I mix in the jug and then I just strain it from the jug into the bottle and everything's done. A quick rinse in my bucket with the strainer and it's ready to use for the next color. So hopefully I won't get this problem happening too many times in the future unless I get too lazy and too much of a rush and forget to strain. So this is the painting that I want to change. And what I've been concerned about is that if I um, sand on the surface, that what I'm gonna do is with the pressure that I use to sand, that I'm going to stretch the canvas and make it all kind of wobbly. So I have just a piece of regular corrugated cardboard and I'm gonna slide that into the back of the frame and just push it down so that it goes between the gap between the the wood and the canvas and then as i turn it over and i want to sand i'm using my hand on the back to support the canvas with the cardboard and then i can use my sandpaper over the top and not create any kind of waves or rippling in my canvas so I tried um, a little bit in advance just so um, we could see what's going to happen and I bought some of this wet and dry um, sandpaper. So far I've only used it dry and I bought two grits. This one here is an 800 and I found this one was, um, was not sandy enough um, for want of a better word. I was going round and 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 it really wasn't making any difference. So I went and bought some more. This one is 220 and 220 again, I would say I could still probably go a bit rougher, but um, it works. So now I've got my little bits of sandpaper. I just cut them into small kind of handy pieces. If I support the canvas with the cardboard underneath and then you can hear the scrapy noise and I can concentrate on where the little bumps are and go over it with my sandpaper. Now, of course, at the same time, I'm actually taking off some of the paint itself. So although it was patchy before, as I'm sanding it, it's getting even patchier, but I don't mind because I am gonna replace the paint anyway. So I'm just going over it now, a little bit at a time. I'm taking my time um, because I don't want to ruin what I've done. And just going over each of these little bumps, just kind of round circular motions like this with my sandpaper, supporting the canvas with that cardboard underneath. And then I'm hoping to gradually work my way all over the canvas and get a nice smooth finish and take down all of these bumps. So you don't need to see me doing that. That is gonna be pretty boring, but uh, rest assured, I'm now gonna spend an hour or maybe more gently going all the little bumps over on this canvas. And then we'll come back and have a look at the finish and see if I've improved it. So here it is so far, I think I did a pretty good job with the sanding. If you have a look on the surface, 
It's a lot smoother now. All of the little lumps and bumps from the paint have gone and I've done a really good job. The canvas is still nice and taut and I've not created any little dints, divots or uh, stretching so it looks good. So um, I considered then what about the repainting and of course this purple colour was very transparent and part of the problem was on this side how patchy it was too. I mean now it's even more patchy obviously where I have um, sanded it but I'm thinking that the purple if I try and do the same again it's just going to end up patchy I'm going to have to do coat after coat after coat and it's going to be so dark so I have decided I'm going to go with black and I've tested some black over on this side you can just see so what I did I got a small brush and I very very carefully painted up to the edge of this swipe panel um, I haven't gone all the way up to the edge because obviously the edge in some places is quite irregular and if we look here where there's some gold if it will focus in you can still see some areas of purple just here but I've also got purple in the main stripe too so I don't think it's too distracting and it's only in small areas so I've given this one coat of black and I'm going to do the same on here I just painted it with the brush so you can just about see kind of the little brush strokes in it but once I've got both sides done I'm going to give them two coats, coats of black and then we'll see what it looks like so this is the progress on the painting so far. As you can see, I've now painted black on both sides and I've done two coats of black. So the black coverage on this is really good and it contrasts really, really nicely with the bright colors here and especially the gold. You can see the gold sparkling in the light there. It looks really good. I've done all the edges and everything too. So this is now finished. I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the result. It's certainly not perfect. You can see if you look carefully, there's you know a few slight impressions here of where there had been a few bumps in the painting before. But overall, I think it's very, very successful. And I'm happy with the contrast now between the black and the bright colors. So I'm not gonna finish this with um, a couple of, well, probably three or four coats of varnish, and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. And here it is done, or almost done. It's got a couple of coats of the um, polycrylic on it and it's looking smooth and glossy so far. I will do another couple of coats, but I have to say I'm absolutely delighted with it now. It was such a mess before, you know, it was completely unusable. And now with a little bit of effort, a bit of um, extra color on there, a bit of gloss, it's looking really good. The colors are nice, it's nice and glitzy and glossy. The black looks good with the nice bright colors. So I think we're calling this one a save. Uh, I'm really delighted because I really love this kind of negative space with just a, a small bold kind of dash of color on it. So now this has become one of my favorite paintings and I'm really glad that the effort I put in was worth it and it's played off. So in the event that you get something similar, you get lumps in your negative space, then know that it's absolutely possible to sand them down um, and make a lovely painting as a result. So thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you at acrylicpouring.com very soon.